Aloha. Uh, this is the second video I'm filming tonight. Uh, this is X-Plane 12 Vice Microsoft Flight Simulator. Figured I'd give it a try. Uh, I've got it working with Flight Plan Go, which is here, and with Air Manager, which is here. Uh, there's some quirks and differences as I've been playing, um, but I wanted to try to do that same flight I just did from Westerly down to uh, East Hampton uh, and see how it goes. Here we go. I'm starting off with the aircraft cold and dark. And we'll cut out a set. Throttles in slightly. Brake is set. All right. And I've already got the pop outs kind of underneath. And I noticed that uh, in X-Plane, now this is the default X-Plane 12. I don't have any add-ons or anything else yet, but um, my navigation uh, displays, my my 530 and my 430 instantly came on. They didn't get the Garmin uh, loading screens. And uh, also a, a, a little difference for me, the, uh, the starter, it's not spring-loaded here, so when I turn it to start, I have to turn it back to both. It might be nitpicky on my part. I'm just kind of talking about what I see as a, as a couple little deltas thus far. Um, and I'm going to taxi my way over to runway 25, and I'm going to try to make that same flight I just did. So, graphics still look really good. Taxi's a little differently than I'm used to. Not bad, though. I'm having to work my rudders a little to... And I haven't even attempted any kind of air traffic control here. Um, this is the first real flight uh, of any duration. I, I did take off once in it, but just as a takeoff and a fly around the airport, nothing else. I do like the traffic though, I gotta say, watching the cars drive by. I mean, I've actually driven by this airport myself uh, in Westerly, so I've been on those roads. So it's kind of cool to see it in the game. Park, parking brake, and let's do a quick run up. That'll take us up to 1800. go to left and we're coming down everything still looks good I'll go back to both come back to right comes back all right and let's give it some flaps take us back to idle release the parking brakes and away we go and again, I apologize if, if if you're hoping to hear anything from either automated air traffic control or me. Um, I don't have any of that set up on here. 
and I haven't learned how to do any of that in here yet, so I'm just kind of coming in flying off the cuff, if you will. Here we are, a little off center line, but we're still good. And throttling up. A little wild on the runway here and getting the feel for these these pedals. But airspeed is alive and we can rotate. So flaps up. I fly at about 3,000 feet or so, which was my the altitude um, I flew in Microsoft Flight Simulator on the last flight. Um, I can't really see any leg data on here. I wasn't able to program in anything, um, so I'm going to be relying on my Flight Plane Go software. does handle a little differently. Uh, I will say that I, I think the SciTech yoke is more responsive in X-Plane than it was in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Still not a fan of this yoke, but it seems a little more responsive in here. It's not as sluggish. And uh, even though I'm kind of squawking VFR down here, I'm actually flying uh, an IFR flight plan. Sloppily, I might add, but I'm flying it. Tomorrow, I may try to play around with the autopilot in here to see how that works for me. So far, though, it seems pretty good. One of the other differences is like graphics wise um, in Microsoft Flight Simulator using the uh, this knob or this uh, roundy roundy very technical term on my mouse I'd be able to uh, pull my view back or zoom in uh, I can't pull it back anymore but let me see I can, I can zoom in but that's as far back as I can go so I can't pull far back I can't get a uh, a more panoramic view within the cockpit. I could do that in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm, and there may be a way to do it in here that I am not aware of. Again, I am a, I'm a novice when it comes to X-Plane 12, or X-Plane in general. I've been a, the past two years I've been mainly flying in Microsoft Flight Simulator. But I will say that getting the uh, Flight Plan Go up and running was super simple, super easy in X-Plane. So I've already got some decent experiences in X-Plane. All right, so we're at 3,000 feet. 
so I'm trying to keep us right around 3,000 feet. So looks like I'm cutting the corner here. It's not intentional. I definitely realize that I'm used to uh, relying on um, navigating via my GNS 530. Having that, um, having each leg in front of you here has uh, definitely been helpful for me. So I'm constantly looking to my left here to make sure I'm on track. I know that's reflecting in how I'm flying. But despite my poor aerial skillmanship, that's a new word, write that down, um, it actually does feel pretty good. I, I, I think I'm a fan of X-Plane 12. If I remember from my last flight, right around Jordan, um, they had me go down to 2,000 feet. So I'll descend as I'm turning into Jordan to 2,000 feet. And then head through uh, from Jordan down to Biga, B I G G A, and then on to Feast, and then. There. Did I just leave? Did I put something by accident? Alright, so I just lost GPS, so kind of. There we go. I got it back. Don't know what happened? Um, that might be, uh, I don't know, a network issue. Um, um, on my part, you uh, when you're connecting X Plane 12 and Flight Plane Go um, under your network, off to the right, there's a section that has uh, like devices, and you can select iPad, iPhone. And when I selected iPad, it already said there was one available on the network, so it automatically knew this iPad was on the network. Um, so it, it was that simple to get the two talking. But if, if there's hits on the network, then I think that that's what I just saw was when it lost uh, GPS connectivity. So 
So now I'm going to slow down a little as we're coming up on Jordan here soon, which should be right about here-ish when I get to that point. I'll make sure I'm descending. And let's, uh, I'm gonna go two, three, one. So let's just put that in there for the next leg. Descent here shortly. Oh, we're gradually beginning it now. But... I will say I'm a little bit spoiled by the, uh, the Garmin G5s that you can get in Air Manager. Um, when you take these gauges um, and you couple them with a knobster, this being the DIY knobster, it, it really adds a lot to, to a setup. Now this knobster is big and clunky because it's the DIY. This is a plastic box I had. In here is an Arduino Nano. Um, the one you can buy from the website uh, Air Manager has. I think it's about $100. Uh, I built this for about 25 I, And I had the parts, so I really didn't spend money to build it because I already had all the pieces parts. Um, if you're looking for something polished and fancy, the, the one from them looks far better than this, but for me, because uh, I mounted it on a clamp, I can move the knobster anywhere on this desk and it, it works for me. I don't have to hard mount it to one location. So we're at about 2,000 feet. 
this vicinity. Our next turn, we'll get a 283. So, I'm going to dial in that next turn so I know where to go when the time comes. I'm going to stay on this heading for now. Another thing I do like about uh, X-Plane um, that I think is a little bit better than, than how Microsoft does it is the casual slewing that you can kind of see. It's, you're not immediately jumping to the view uh, quickly. It's, it's like you're slowly turning your head. I, I do like that effect. send it a little bit further because I'm about to get into that final turn um, towards uh, Hampton or East Hampton I should say I think in Microsoft Flight Simulator the automated air traffic control had me at 1600 feet right now so I'm kind of close to that now we're going to start Turn. Okay. We should. And I am not. There it is. Didn't see it at first. Okay. So there is our airport. a little bit left because we kind of overshot it. I say we as if, you know, it's a team sport via video. lost GPS yet again and just regained it it's kind of hokey how we uh, lose it and get it back but that's probably something with my home network price right. it should be on track want to hang out at about this altitude I think we're a little to the right, but we'll, we'll see as we get a little closer.
pops out. Slowly but surely, make our way down. We are a little bit high at this point, but we're doing okay. Still a wee bit high. But I do like the traffic, I do. Watching watching the cars drive by. Big fan of that. We were way high on this, but we should still be able to go back. So, rough landing. <laughs> Very rough landing. Um, um, but I will say I definitely liked a lot of this better than Microsoft Flight Simulator. Um, even the the uh, the lights on the on the ground, the effect is better. Um, what is, oh, I missed a taxiway. Yeah, I did. Let's see, just trying to taxi my way on the ground here a little. very unfamiliar with this airport so no idea exactly where I'm headed or what I'm doing so we'll we'll definitely go on the grass a little that's always fun um, but I, I the lighting effects here I gotta say are pretty awesome uh, if you look at that the, the way the the light hits the trees in the distance, how it's kind of, it's intense here, but it's a faded light. Um, just going to find a spot to park really quick. idea where I'm headed. 
But because I see a parked plane, I'm going to go hang out with him. Well, not that way. It would help if I had a map. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, I almost feel bad about all that. Um, well, that was exciting. Uh, yeah, I definitely don't have much skill in the way of uh, navigating on the ground. But I gotta say, for my first uh, X-Plane 12 flight, I was impressed. Um... With this setup, I uh, I definitely wish I had the functionality in the 530s. Now, it may be there, and this is an area I'm a total novice at in X-Plane. So, I'm going to have to play more in those and and see if I can build a flight plan in those. Um, I did like tying it into Flight Plan Go software. However, the Flight Plan Go software, that little... It's green saying I've got good GPS uh, right now. It went to red a bunch of times during the flight. Uh, if you watch my flying become erratic, it was because this was going red. Um, and I was trying to recover or figure out how to get that back. Um, but overall, I'm pretty impressed with X-Plane 12. I gotta say. And the the effects of like the, the light, the way it's... the way it interacts with the environment, how it's a faded uh, light in the distance. It, it, there's a lot of realism to it. I'm, I'm, I gotta say I'm pretty happy with it and I think I'm gonna be flying it a lot more. I don't know if I'm gonna use it as much as I use Microsoft Flight Simulator, but I'm definitely gonna keep flying on it. So thanks for sticking with me if you did, you know, and, and hopefully you, you saw the two flights side by side. Um, I, I think they're both great sims, but this one definitely uh, worked well for me. I definitely like the visuals. Uh, I like the interface to Flight Plan Go. It worked great with uh, Air Manager 4. It was fairly seamless. So, yeah, I'm a big fan, I think. So thanks for watching, and as always, stay safe and happy flying out there.